Written by Quote with Hope and read by Eleanor Elizabeth. Summary. Hitoshi brings Izuku to his favourite childhood tradition. In Japan, the winter this year was harsh, unforgiving bites of frost whipping past already frosted faces. Snow piled high on rooftops and ever higher on the ground below, a single clear path for cars made by a salt truck. Wherever there wasn't snow, there was ice, black ice specifically, a painful, slippery, unseen hazard. Hitoshi hated it. He hated how he could easily slip and fall on his ass no matter how careful he was. He couldn't stand the shiver that ran down his spine every two minutes, no matter how many jackets he wore. How his boyfriend would joke about how he was Rudolph in disguise after a few minutes outside. So why? Why is he, Hitoshi Yamazawa, a teen who absolutely hated the winter chill, going downtown with just a coat, a coffee, and a boyfriend? The window displays. Yep, over-exaggerated advertising that is bound to make people stop and stare, if just for a minute. Plaster white mannequins that stand together in poses a little too human for it to be peaceful looking. Well, yes, Hitoshi hated the nipping cold. He actually loved these displays. As a kid, he remembers running up and down the streets of toy stores to watch all the trains go off, the dolls start moving and the planes that were strung up start spinning. It got to the point where, as a child, the owners knew his name and routine from how often they'd see him be dragged away from their displays and back to the orphanage. From then on, they would always double their efforts in decorating, adding more warm lights, some extra toys in the front, or just allowing it to be on for the long hours of the night. When he was adopted by the Yamazawas, he was hesitant to tell them of his little tradition, resorting to sneaking out and lying instead. However, he'd forgotten that both of his new parents worked night shifts, both being in the same area of the lights. Now, if both adults saw him, they didn't say anything. No matter how much they wanted to tell him the dangers of doing such a thing, they waited for him to come to them. And when he did, the weather was just too cold for him to go alone. And when Airy came along, Hitoshi dragged her into it as well. Let's just say she was a big fan of the mini worlds in the windows. When Izuku invited him out in a green hoodie with one of his generic shirts peeking out, practically looking like a young, stupidly handsome movie star, Hitoshi knew it was time. It was time to drag this green bean of a teen into this tradition neck deep. The lights reflected perfectly off Hitoshi as Izuku gazed at his luminous eyes. The pupil of his eyes had widened while he was staring at the display in front of him, the white pushing the purple to the corners. He could look past the tired eye bags, the light scarring from his past and the always angry look and see that childlike wonder he held for those lights. It was kind of ironic how his eyes would light up with the lights. A moth to a flame, really. You still with me, Thumper? Hitoshi's voice brought him back from his Oh no, he's hot! fantasy. You were muttering up a storm. Am I really that dreamy? He teased, looking away from the lights, his hands on his hips and bending down to a slightly flustered Midoriya's face. The air between them was a white fog as they stared at each other for just a few seconds until Izuku pecked at Hitoshi's nose. Yep, you look cute looking at the lights. They get rid of some of the 31-year-old teacher look you have. Looping an arm through Hitoshi's, he spun the two around to continue walking down the sidewalk, Just as Izuku couldn't keep his eyes off the lights, Hitoshi couldn't help but stare at the vibrant green hair. He was beginning to believe Todoroki's conspiracy on him being part cat, considering how he just wanted to play with the puffball of Viridian. Back when Pop showed Eri some American children's books, he could remember how the next time she saw him, she asked if he was a... what was it again? Truffle a tree? Anyways... Class 1A began theorising on what his boyfriend looks like based off the tree. Needless to say, they were pretty far off. They weren't, but he can't let them get the upper hand now, can he? The night rush had stopped some time earlier, the ever-passing car rare. Others were out on the street, children begging their parents to go into a shop and get something sweet, couples who were having too hard of a time keeping their hands off each other. But they all had that atmosphere, The one that Hitoshi felt as a kid. Warm, simple love. 
Hand in hand, the two walked back to the Yamazawa's apartment, leaning slightly into each other with gentle smiles. Hey, Hito, Izuku asked, leaning in closer to the warm teen. Hmm? Looking away from the concrete in front of him, he stared into the soft tufts of green. Have you guys taken Eri to see Santa yet? Oh yeah, they'd be bringing Eri to all of the holiday traditions this year. Oh, no, we haven't. Maybe we can just dress up Dad in a Santa suit. The thought was funny, but most likely not probable. That man would do a lot of things, but Hitoshi thinks a fat suit may be the line. With a laugh, the green teen continues. Well, if you need a place to go, Katsomol is hosting him. Rounding the corner, the apartment was in view. Orangish-yellow lights could be seen through the window. The shadows of his overly expressive dad cooking dinner and the two cats lounging in the windows were clear from the ground floor. Letting go of Azuku's hand, he says, Not to sound desperate or anything, but you should totally join us for dinner. He rubbed the back of his neck, looking over with his best convincing smile. Azuku was hesitant to reply. He wanted to agree, to meet Hitoshi's parents and younger sister. Oh, how desperately he wants to look at the embarrassing photos of Hitoshi with his father's, or attempt to style his hair with his sister. But he can't. He can't because he can't be sure he won't be yelled at or chastised for trying to infect their family with his quirklessness. One day, Hito. Besides, my mum's waiting for me, and you know how anxious she gets when I'm not in on time. Izuku replied with a sigh, the ground becoming a lot more interesting to look at. Oh, Kami, he hated lying. Okay then, next time. He didn't sound angry or annoyed, but rather determined. Leaning down, Hitoshi cupped Izuku's cheek, gaining the attention of the teen. I'll wait till you're ready, even if it takes a lot of time and convincing. Izuku might have cried, for the seventh time that afternoon, if it hadn't been for the dryness of his eyes from the slowness cold. Leaning in, the two shared a kiss, the heat from their bodies radiating to each other in the cold. Love you, Cottontail, Hitoshi called as he walked up the slippery steps to his apartment door. He could hear Izuku call out one of his cutesy nicknames that could always make him blush as he walked off into the city streets. Maybe he could play off the redness of his face for the cold being rough with him? Towing off his shoes at the entrance, he turned to call out his arrival, only to be met with four, and a half, pairs of overly intrusive eyes staring at him. The only thing Hatoshi could do was panic, as the three gave an ungodly unison of creepy smiles. God damn it, who taught Eri how to do that? So, why don't you come and sit down and tell us about your little broccoli boy, Hatoshi? Oh, shit. Somewhere on the train to another prefecture, Izuku began to violently sneeze. Hey there, guys, gals, and non-binary pals. It's Ella, and I hope you're having a lovely day today. Ugh, oh, wasn't this so cute? It's actually a part one, so don't worry about the little cliffhanger ending there. Well, we'll see what happens next soon. Izuku and Hitoshi are just so cute. Ugh, oh, I love them. But what did you think? Be sure to let me know down below what you thought of the thick. Uh, how you're doing today, what plans you've got this week, I don't know, I just like talking to you guys down below, you know how it is, you could also like the video, you know, if you liked it, and to boost my serotonin levels, or, you know, you could also subscribe to be notified whenever I make new videos, which at the moment is every day, because it's Figmas, what day even is this, day eight, seven, eight, I don't know what day we're on, <laughs> But we do still have plenty more in the lead up to Christmas and I can't wait. This has been such a fun experience. I am keeping up with it. I will do this. On another note, you can be sure to join the Discord if you want to do that. We've been having a good time. We were all on voice chat today. Well, not everyone, obviously, because it's a there's quite a few people in it now which is kind of mad um but a bunch of us were just like having a nice fun little chat and they've all told me to go to bed even though that's my job is to tell you to go to bed because you know why because until i see you again you need to be sure to practice some self-care yes go to bed on time do as i say not as i do <laughs> brush your teeth drink lots of water eat your five a day okay I'll be watching.
Because yes, this is a threat. I will catch you guys later.